Hi everybody, it's your boy Get Daved. Welcome back to Let's Update with me, Get Daved. We're doing some changes. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut to the cut to the crap. I'm not going through the the channel intro and all that. I'm gonna be closing down the channel Patreon and I'm gonna stop officially having a streaming schedule. Now we're gonna get into the why. So that seemed a bit harsh. It's gonna be okay. Also, who cares? But it's going to be okay. So, a couple things. I kind of just don't want to do it anymore. Now, when I say that, I don't mean sharing video games and making videos and recording that sort of stuff or streaming it. I, don't, I, I want to keep doing that. I don't know what on what schedule, but I still care about that. I still have these little treasures that I like sharing. And that's one of two reasons I started the channel in the first place. And I'm going to talk about the history of YouTube a little bit, and we'll go down memory lane. Um, that we'll talk about a lot of things. But I don't want to do it on the schedule anymore, okay? I, I don't, And don't want to have the obligations and that sort of stuff. And don't want to feel like I owe people. And I do. Um, but again, this is going to be a longer conversation, and we'll we'll loop around a little bit. When I started YouTube, there was a ton of gaming content on it, kind of. It was constantly being like hunted down by copyright protection bots. Let's Plays were largely seen as illegal and you were um, playing with fire recording it and you didn't own the video game. Now, the I, I don't dispute that. You know, you don't own the rights to distribute the video game, but people would talk about it like piracy when it's like, yeah, but it's the performance of the game, you know? If I bought a soccer ball and then someone recorded me like playing with it and scoring a goal, I don't owe Adidas money, in my opinion, <laughs> because they manufactured the ball. And there was a lot of talk about, oh, as a transformative work or whatever. And this was mixed up with people, you know, just uploading soundtracks, which still happens and, and having no commentary playthroughs or whatever. But it was this whole thing and people were getting squashed left and right and people were trying to find like safe companies to let's play their stuff and everything. And man what a mess my point is with all this resistance it was not particularly profitable or anything but there was just so much enthusiasm and it was a much smaller community there were maybe a few big lpers but relatively small community there would only be like one let's play per game and it was kind of seen as like rude to make one in the same series or whatever and, and i don't know it was really cool and really tight and then within that Angry Video Game Nerd was really, really popular. And I mean no disrespect to him when I say that, that I didn't really like people like copying that like high rage, high intensity thing. And I sometimes, I, I can rage, but by default, you know, I'm just one part thinking critically about the games and two, just really enjoying it and wanting to share it. Because I have this personality type where if I like something, it's not enough for me to like it. I have to proselytize about it to everyone around me. And YouTube was just really good at enabling, <laughs> enabling that. So that's what I loved, okay? The, the climate's changed a lot over the years. YouTube is much bigger. It's much more corporate. Um, you don't get the copyright strikes. It's actually the other way around now where... You know, back in the day, it was a big deal. Like you had a Let's Play channel and you became a YouTube partner. You got your channel got monetized. Now everything is monetized. I have to do quite a bit of work to get as few ads in the videos as possible. It's annoying. The rating system, you used to be able to rate videos. You would give them stars, zero to five stars. Like you're rating a movie, like you're a movie critic because it's a video. And then they're like, oh, well, so many people are just doing five and zero. We're just going to turn it up, turn it into thumbs up and thumbs down. And then they're like, well, actually people are thumbs downing these EA videos and our YouTube rewinds and everything. So we're going to let them keep thumbs downing, but we're going to hide the number. You know, don't let them know that other people dislike the same thing. And it's just, I don't know, that that's less fun. Like you're taking some of the risk. It's, it's a playground where no one can fall and get hurt. You can make a safe playground, but it won't be any fun to play in. Anyway, it used to be able to leave video replies back in the day and people would have quote conversations often insult fests uh in the in the comment section but i don't know it felt a little bit more like a pirate ship and i liked it now now it feels more like um a highly bureaucratic enterprise the captain jellico enterprise um and the other thing is just like 
video gaming content is just handled very differently. And there's some stuff I like better that just didn't exist before. And then there's some stuff that I really feel is lost. And again, I could say like, I'm gonna make a YouTube channel doing what I like to do. And that's what I've been doing for a while. I just tried to make it all about the games. I had one person tell me like, oh, Dave's all about the audience. No, it was all about the game. Uh, I'm trying to share it with you guys. Um, but I don't see myself as someone who's ever playing to the, to the crowd. I was trying to like hold this thing up so you guys could all see it and share my enthusiasm for it. So you could kind of see the beauty I see in it. That was always the dream. And to do it, you know, not screaming as often as some other people. Uh, the other catch is just the, the culture of Let's Plays on YouTube is very, very different now. Again, I think YouTube kind of has like Twitch fighting for gaming content and they decided to really pivot and they're going more for like viral and TikTok-y sort of stuff or whatever. And that'll change in two years and who cares? But man, they don't want Let's Plays on the, on the, on the platform really. And there was a time when everything was gold and you could end up on the YouTube front page and stuff like that. You can do that now if you have like a video essay about games or if you're doing like some really fun thing with a bunch of other streamers and th there's a little bit of an angle there, but not like an LP anymore. I think of a channel like Game Grumps, which I've enjoyed over the years, not always in all, in all of its forms, but in general, I really liked it. And, you know, when they started, they were just getting subscribers so fast and they were getting views and Danny came on and they had a really good dynamic, I think then bringing on even more of their animator friends and now we're doing steam train and we're having different people and we're doing all these episodes every day and now we're doing a table uh top gaming thing and just grow 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 big 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 and just the air has been slowly being let out of the tires and you just you kind of just watch the party end and it's sad yeah i don't know how else to put it you just feel you feel the passage of time and things ending and again there's different formats and people are like there a lot of people set up like multiple channels and you know mr beast philanthropy channel or whatever and you know we have the game grumps table flip channel for our like our variety 10 minute power hour thing you know so it's like there's permutations but for someone who only ever was trying to show off chrono trigger is an amazing game yeah the era has passed a little bit there's still stuff i really like you know randomizers or maybe like a little oversaturated in some ways, but there's some really great subcultures around it. I really love the Final Fantasy randomizer and the community and everything they do. Anyone who is a little into randomizers and RPG ones sometimes knows about Free Enterprise, but like the Final Fantasy one randomizer in that community, it's light years ahead. It's, it's, just, it's so incredible in the events they put on and the personalities they have and everything. It's, it's so wonderful. Uh, RPG Limit Break, I think, is a fantastic channel, and they have like a stream charity event just like GDQ. But GDQ also, like, it kind of got big and corporate and a little bit and personal, in my opinion, anyway. Um, and some of it was okay. Just the charm wore off, whereas I feel like RPG Limit Break still has that and it's beautiful. And, and there's errors apparent out there as well. I mentioned that at the start. I'm closing down the Patreon. If you want to know, you're like, oh, but I still want content like this. There's people out there doing it. Dan Floyd, who started Extra Credits, he does New Frame Plus, also kind of a friend of mine. He has a Let's Play channel called Playframe, which is great. All Dragon, friend of the channel and longtime subscriber and great Let's Player in his own right. He does awesome stuff, which I really like. Retro Break, if you just like the enthusiasm for games, there's a YouTube channel called Retro Break, where this is the guy super passionate about older games is doing stuff. Mr. Darcy, longtime subscriber, is carrying the torch on Extra Life Day. Small Ant is another Canadian streamer. If you need your Canadian hit, Mr. Darcy, also Canadian. Dan Floyd, fake Canadian, but working on it. Small Ant, he does this thing I really like where he's sort of fighting against the grind a little bit. When a new game comes out, you know, let's imagine Breath of the Wild comes out and it's special. Sometimes a game comes out and it's a big deal. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth just came out and it is a big deal. And lots of people are recording video and having a great time. But there's also this pressure to get like early access copies so you can get the first stream and so you can rush through the game. And the speedrunners are trying to speed run the game as fast as possible. And so they'll even brag about like, yo, I was trying to break this game from day one. And to me, not every time you go to a restaurant is special. Sometimes it's McDonald's and you're just having fast food. But if you sat down at a really nice restaurant 
and you were wolfing down the food as fast as possible so you could get the first review to out. Again, for someone who wants to put a game on a pedestal and show everyone like, this is a treasure, this is beautiful, let me tell you how. That sort of stuff is just so disillusioning to me. Anyway, I respect a guy like Small Ant because he's still cranking out Pokemon Emerald videos years later and is exploring these depths of what if we mod it so that we can't use items? What if we mod it so we can only use items? What if we do all these things? Trying to, yeah, just exploring the depths of it. I think that sort of stuff's super cool. Anyway, my point is like there's been an era that has ended and there's exciting new stuff as well. But for me, I, I, I feel the shift. So I want to dial it back gonna rethink just how i want to do things but i want to just go back to having true independence whenever someone offers me money to do something i think i've still said no every single time without fail um i humored one thing once and then kind of regretted it and it didn't amount to anything anyway but yeah i want to go back to that full independence and then just have some schedule independence and then come back when there's something I do feel like really slipped through the cracks and it's like, hey gang, I found something beautiful. That's my take anyway. Regarding Patreon itself, I just want to clarify a couple things. With this tale of YouTube, and I don't want this to be like old man yelling at Sky. I'm yeah, trying to tell you the tale of how something changed over time. I guess the point I'm trying to make is just, this is where I started and why, you know, as the medium has changed, I'm not enthusiastic about it the same way, but there's still cool things out there. It's just not what I'm doing right now. I will miss things like regular commenters and co-op events I would do with LPRs and stuff. And again, that scene sort of change, which is, you know, leading to me to this decision. Uh, showing off the games I love, obviously, and that one I still want to find ways to sneak in. Uh, I won't miss the hustle like I talked about where, oh, yeah, this game came out. We've got to have crank out content as fast as possible. Use AI to assist us cranking out content as fast as possible. Do Yeah, screw all that crap. Give me one thing you can love for a decade instead. I have some notes. I wanted this to be a little raw. Sorry if I'm saying lots of um or pausing lots. But I wanted to talk through, talk through the tale. Uh, yeah, as far as Patreon's role in all of this, so many, many years ago now, um, back in the 70s, I said I wanted to make video games. And actually, I don't think I told anyone for a little bit, but I started working on it. And I had adjacent skills and I'd done mods and games and stuff. So I started doing it and then I got okay at it. Not as good as I thought I was at the time, but I got okay enough to start making a game and told people. And I was like, okay, and we can use the YouTube channel to start help paying for stuff and everything because there's always the issue of like you, you know very few people have all the skills they need at a high enough level so it's like okay i need help with these things i can contract that out but we need more money okay maybe we could do it if we had patreon patreon came in big and helped us and by the end i can say i don't know how i would have survived some of the dark times that came later eventually you discover man making a video game is hard and then, like, the fact is, I got quite good at it. Good enough to have a really good industry job now. Yeah, I, I, I'm in a really good place, actually. Not like, I'm set for life, but it's like, man, I came through the storm. <laughs> I survived the, the crucible that a lot of people bail on. Um, and this is something I've talked to with other people that have been, like, managing games but it's like if you want to know why so many people get burned out and quit or why so many games fail or so many things go wrong in this industry just think about how hard everything we've done has been um and yeah i did have very hard times i've mentioned this in other videos but uh, you know i got an illness that nearly killed me patreon came through kept us financially alive so i could become physically <laughs> you know stable again there was a two-year stretch where we were just like depleting savings trying to finish Reina, which we never were able to finish the the day i got the last asset to finish Reina, we were going to redo the final boss fight everything else was done just the final boss fight was left and we we're just going to redo it because again i'd redone it twice already but it's like this has to be just right you know i'm not trying to be perfectionist but this one's got to be good the next day was September 12th, and that was the day 
Unity announced their terms of service changes, which effectively, I think a lot of people haven't fully seen through the, the, the full implications of what will happen. A lot of attention got stolen up by this uh, installation fee they were going to charge people whenever they installed the game. Slipping beyond notice was this thing that where they like quietly abolished the mid-pricing tier and then they didn't have mixed licenses, which basically means if you as a studio make more than $100,000 a year US, um, and this, is your, this isn't your game makes that much, this is your studio has that much revenue, then every single person at your company who uses Unity has to switch to a version where you have to give them a couple thousand dollars a year every year. And I mean, kind of forever. And to save money, we transferred as many people and as many things to Unity as possible maximizing the financial hit that would impact and and again you carry that forward in perpetuity and they you know i've had the experience of having a, a license officer from from unity come to us and be like hey we noticed some of you have mixed licenses you have to give us more money so it's like all of that happened with rain on the last day so it's like we can't release it but i was able to secure the rights to absolutely every single asset that was ever created for us there was a bit where we had stake share and everything and a bunch of things 100% of that has been recovered. We never did have a publisher for Reina. It was always self-published, which made it so hard sometimes. On it, on scale, the, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, which might not mean a lot to you, but I've done some hard crap and this was leagues ahead because it's just hard to do stuff with limited money. Um, but we actually did it, had some deals, some rev share deals and everything, but we got it all back. If you like are in a situation like this the publisher could be like mm, we're throwing it away but we're keeping the ip and you lose all of your ideas because you sign them over to us or we control them and you need our permission if you want to do something again or there can be all sorts of problems none of that happened we own everything which means we can take all of that hard work every 3d asset every sound effect every line of dialogue every bit of story that's all good that's all game engine independent and it's also genre independent so been sitting down with friends because I've made some friends in the gaming industry over the years and be like, hey, we could make whatever game we want with these things. We have we have these ingredients and we can use whatever we want and we can throw away whatever we want and we can, yeah, we have some interesting possibilities. We could even go to a publisher for round two if we wanted. So we're looking into those sorts of things. If you're wondering what the Patreon did, it enabled that. Who knows where it will go? It kept me alive, genuinely. I mean, obviously, this overlaps with something that comes up in a lot of strategy games where people are like, oh, Dave would have lost if he didn't have this one thing happen. But it's like, well, if that one thing didn't happen, I would have tried finding a different thing. So who knows what life would have like looked like without Patreon, but it would look drastically different, and it's hard to imagine anything being easier. So for everyone who supported me there, thank you very much. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. I really do mean that. I keep, I've keep. i asked many times when I was like, hey guys, is there any like creative thing, you know? Print, print the poster of the channel art and sign it or something, but people were cool. Anyway, if there is a thank you I can give, I'm interested. I do have a decent backlog, so there's that. Anyway, that's the state of the channel. If you're wondering, oh, where will I go for my content now? Like I said, I have those things I recommended before and I can put links to them in the comment section um, or, or in the description, sorry. So that's the tale. Thank you for humoring me. Sorry if this comes as bad news, but I thought people would want to know. There's been like this giant black hole. A lot of this stuff has come in through Steam updates, which not everyone watches, or conversations on the Discord server, which not everyone is part of. So I just wanted to share it here and uh, yeah, loop people in and yeah, kind of just explain the new medium term plan for, for the channel and just what I'm going to be up to and everything. Um, don't cry for me. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of people like could feel it coming slowly. A lot of what I've been streaming lately has been me trying to wrap up loose ends and like close off the last LPs and everything. Unfinished stuff that I wanted to come back to. Um, not you, Kingdom Hearts 3. But that's where we are. Thank you for, for listening. Thanks for being fans of the channel this long if you are or if this is your first time here hello and welcome and get daved there's a nice backlog there's an okay backlog it's mixed i like the ff7 one and the second chrono trigger one 
and Dragon Quest Builders too. There's some real treasures there. Check it out. Anyway, thank you everybody. You've been very good to me and I appreciate it. And not exactly going to take a break, but going to do a change up and think about it and think about it truly. I do want to mention one other just very tiny thing in passing. You might think like, oh, but Dave, you're saying all these things and, you know, basically it means it's the end. Because of the difficulty of the last several years and like the, the efforts of game design and I've gone from like, well, one, 2023, 2024, bad time for a lot of game devs, a lot of publishers clamping down on money, a lot of studios shut down and everything. It's been a desperate time, which I think everybody knows in general. Um, but it has led to a lot of overtime, a lot of hard work, a lot of hard struggles. And for me, if you add up all of the days off, for example, I have had in the last four years, it totals about seven weeks. If you subtract from that, the, the, which I uh, earned through overtime work, it turns into more than negative one year um, by quite a bit, actually. That's not yeah that's not even counting overtime worked for myself uh and that's not counting any channel stuff i go from that to uh let's just say a much better situation one of those good jobs and very rare ones to come across in tech the struggles have been worth it i survived the the culling i became one of those people with experience <laughs> eligible for senior positions who have yeah survived and there's a lot more opportunity now. If you only have five days off a year, it's hard to think about spending them recording a video game. And that's been my situation for a long time. And that's part of why I bet the channel has been so hard too. I have thus far ended up in a better place and I'm very happy. And again, there is kind of like a giant reset happening in my life in so many ways. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm kind of looking forward to having life back. And part of it comes into this and it comes into having a lot less financial desperation compared to before when it's like, it's just the Dave show. I'm terminally ill in a hospital bed during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. So I'm sealed off from everybody else, including the doctors trying to discover that I don't have COVID. I have something else. So they have to actually figure out what it is. Yeah, that was my situation. All while burning through savings with no publisher and no other people working on the project at the time. That was the level of desperation at one point. Now it's it's just a lot more relaxed. So I am hopeful that actually I'll be able to maybe do more stuff, but in a different way. I don't know. Might do more streaming, might do less. Might do obscure stuff that no one but me will care about. Like that Snow Bros LP. Uh, who knows? But it's a new beginning and I'm super excited about it. And we got there through just misery because of a lot of help from you guys and because of the YouTube channel and because of Patreon and because of everything. And there's still cool stuff out there and let's see what happens is basically what I'm saying. Sorry that I talked in circles a couple times, but you know, there's like a lot of years and a lot of layers I'm trying to sort through. See you all in the next Let's Play.